So these are my three favorite and possibly easiest stylish transitions in Premiere Pro. First up we have the smooth zoom, then the luma fade, and also the strobe or x-ray transition. So let's jump into Premiere Pro and have a look at how it's done. For the smooth zoom, obviously we're transitioning from one clip to another and to get this effect, we're gonna be working in an adjustment layer. The reason I want you to do this in an adjustment layer is because it gives you the ability later on to copy and paste that transition to other clips, meaning you don't have to repeat this process more than once. So let's go down to our project window, click on new item and let's find adjustment layer. You're gonna name this smooth zoom. We're going to take our adjustment layer and place it on top of our clips and we're going to try and make this to be around 12 frames in length. A little handy tip here if you're unsure of how to do that, as I'm resizing the clip you'll see a little black icon underneath it that tells you the duration. At the moment it says 16 frames, I can move this down to 12. Now I've made that 12 frames in length and it's snapped to the start of the second clip. I want it to be evenly placed over both clips, so six frames on one clip and six frames on another. And a really easy way to do that is to zoom in on it and literally just bump this to the left. And as we move it, we'll see a little black box underneath that's telling us how many frames we're moving it. So there it says minus six frames. So now I know it's evenly placed over both clips. So once we've got that adjustment layer in place and we select it, if we go over to effects, and we're going to look for the transform effect. There it is under distort, we'll place that on the adjustment layer. So once I've got that effect in place, I wanna move my playhead to be dead center, so right snapped into the middle of those two clips. This is just gonna make the automation of this transition a little bit easier in a second. So under effects controls for the transform effect we've placed on there, we're looking for scale. And on scale, if we hit the stopwatch, so it is set to 100% currently. We're gonna move that to the left. Now we're gonna create another keyframe just by pressing the add keyframe button there. We're gonna move that to the right. And now we're gonna create another one at 300%. So literally click where it says 100% and type 300. We can move our third one to the far right now and it should snap to the end of our adjustment there. So we don't want this effect to be too linear in how it behaves, it looks a bit unnatural then, so we're going to ease it in and ease it out, and that's quite simple. So we click to select that keyframe that we've created, right click, we go ease in. On that centre one we'll do the same, we go to auto bezier, and on the first one do the same, and ease out. Now the final thing to do on it is to add a bit of motion blur, and thankfully that's built into the transform effect. So if we unselect use composition shutter angle and we select our own shutter angle underneath it to be 360 degrees. So we look at that effect in action, we should have a nice smooth zoom with a bit of motion blur between those two effects. And because we've created it on an adjustment layer, I can literally copy and paste that to be a transition anywhere later on in our project. So next up is the Luma Fade or Gradient Wipe Transition. Once you've seen this in action, you'll recognize it from a lot of popular vloggers out there, especially ones that are making travel videos, and it's a surprisingly easy transition to create. So the first really important thing is to have our first clip on video layer two, and our second clip on video layer one. We want these clips to overlap, that's really important. We're gonna do that by around 12 frames again. So if I select my second clip and move it to the left, until it says minus 12. There we go. The reason we need these clips on different layers and to overlap is because that overlapping is the duration of the transition. So the longer the clips overlap on top of each other, the longer our transition can be, or shorter if you go vice versa. On our first clip, we're just going to cut where the transition happens, where the clips join. We're gonna select the second cut of that. If we go over to our effects window now and type in gradient, we're looking for the gradient wipe transition, which is gonna place that on that cut of the first clip. Now again, we're going to need to automate how this effect works. So if we click the stopwatch next to transition completion, that'll create a keyframe. That will be 0% and we're gonna move that all the way to the left, so the start of the clip. And then we're gonna grab where it says 0%, make it 100% and move that all the way to the right. Again, we don't want that to be too straight, too linear, because it feels a little unnatural, so we're going to ease it in. Again, select our second keyframe, right-click, and go to Ease Out. We can see now how that affects the clips. 
and it gives a cool kind of gradient transition between the two. For me, that's a little bit hard. The, the gradient is a little bit harsh and thankfully you can smooth that off. So if we go to transition smoothness, for me, I like to set that to around 25% and the, the hard edges are removed from that gradient wipe. You'll notice inside the effects for gradient wipe, there's an option that says gradient layer. It's either video layer one or video layer two. That is effectively which way around this gradient wipe will work. So if I select it to video layer one, you'll see it will be the reverse of what we just had. If I set it to video layer two, you see it's back to how it was before. There's no right way around for that. It is a matter of personal preference. So have a play with it see which one you prefer the look of for your particular transition. Third and final in this list is the X-ray or strobe transition. This is a personal favorite, especially for any edits that are fast paced or any kind of sequence you've got that have got a lot of movement happening in them. This is particularly effective. So the first thing we need to do is create a thing called a color mat. And that is literally just a frame filled with one color. So if we go to new item, color mat, now we have an option to pick the color. We want this just to be white. So go right to the bottom left, select OK, and then let's name it, and we're gonna name this strobe. The only reason to name our adjustment layers or our color mats is so that later on, if we wanna reuse them, they're easy to find in the project window. So let's grab that strobe. We're gonna place it on the join of the two clips. And again, I'm gonna make this around 12 frames. Because it's 12 frames in length, it's very easy to distribute evenly over the two clips, clip one and clip two. And because I've got it snapped to the start of clip two, I can literally select it and move it to the left six frames. And I know that then that's perfectly even between the two clips. So I'm gonna get my playhead and I'm gonna snap it to the perfect join between the two clips. That will make the automation process in a second a little bit easier for us. And then let's select the color map that we've named Stroke. We're going to go up to opacity and the first thing we're going to do is change the blend mode to difference. Now we've got that working we're going to automate it so it switches basically on and off in a strobe like fashion so let's create a keyframe there by selecting the add keyframe button and we're going to move one frame to the left by using the left key on our keyboard and we're going to move the opacity down to zero. We'll go one frame left again up to 100 down to zero. We'll go back to the middle and we're gonna do the same the other way around. So one frame forward down to 0%, one frame forward up to 100%, one frame forward back down to zero. The really important bit is that it begins and ends with 0%. You can make it as long or as short as you like, but it should always start and end at zero. So now that's in place, let's see how it looks. It's a cool little strobe x-ray style transition and it's very easy to achieve. Again, the great thing with it being on a color mat is that I can literally copy and paste that transition to be anywhere in my project. So I don't have to repeat that process more than once. So that's my top three easy stylized transitions in Premiere Pro. They are the simplest ways to add a great deal of production value to your YouTube videos or vlogs. Hit next video is coming up any second. There's some suggestions on screen. And yeah. Thanks. What about this? It's a great way to end. <laughs>